because he wants to kill the first male seed. What difference does that make, Pastor D? That makes a difference because, watch this, when Cain brought the fruit, he didn't bring faith. What Cain really did was, was that Cain said, well, I'm going to take what I have and I'm going to make sure I got enough for me so I'm going to put my stuff up on the shelf and then whatever's left, I'm going to take to God. Ooh, y'all not catching that. He took from the field and he put it up. He started it up. He put something in the deep freezer to freeze it, flash, flash, flash freeze it. And then he takes the rest and he goes and gives to God. What does Abel do? Abel takes the first male lamb. Why is that important? It's important because the first male lamb is the most valuable. Why is it the most valuable? It's the most valuable because it is what contains the seed. So in other words, what Abel was saying was, God, I got enough faith to give you the most valuable thing I got because I know if I show you that I got that kind of faith, you're going to bless the rest. What does that look like? I wish I had a seed in here, but just imagine if I had a seed. Some of y'all, your seed is your money. Some of y'all, your seed is your time. And what we often do is, is that we eat our seed because we're afraid if we don't eat it, we're going to die. That's not faith. What is faith? Faith is taking an apple seed and not eating the apple seed. Faith is taking an apple seed and saying, you know what? Rather than eat the apple seed, I will sacrifice the apple seed and plant the apple seed in the ground. Oh, you all have got to catch this. That's where faith comes in because when you plant the apple seed in the ground and when you kill that thing, when you water that thing, when you tend to that thing, while you may not get it today, you may not get it tomorrow, you may not you want to, but somebody said, somebody knows that God can show up right on time. And so Abel brought a seed faith of you, you do know that the seed represents your future. And so what God wants with your priorities is that he said, he wants you to understand that if you want Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday blessed, he said, just give me something. Can right, y'all hear what I'm saying? Yeah. He said, if you want 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, all the way around to uh, 7 o'clock, he said, if you want all them hours to be blessed, yeah. he said, just give me 6 o'clock. Yeah. Oh, you yeah. just missed it today. Oh, my God. Yeah. This is time. Yeah. He said, if you want to be blessed, And the first is tough because it's the most valuable. Yeah. And what is valuable contains the seed of your future. Yeah. And when you prove to God, you got faith in your seed, he will bless the rest. Yeah. Oh. All right. God. Yeah. And so Cain brings what's left. And God rejects it. Abel brings the first, the most valuable, and God looks favorable on it. Now, let's 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 look at verse six or seven. I'm almost done. Six or seven. The Bible says, "Then the Lord said to Cain, Why are you angry? Why is your face downcast?'" Then he asked, and these three, the third question: If you do what is right, will you not be accepted? But if you do not do what is right, sin is crouching at your door. It desires to have you, yeah. but you must rule over it. Here's the first thing. Here's the thing I need you to get out of this. One. Watch this. This is called reaction. 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 Newton's third law of motion. Come on. Emotion. <laughs> motivation. Yeah. Is that for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. Right. Yeah. All right? So whenever God does something, he can expect you're going to react to it. Yeah. And can react. Now here's what I get out of that scripture. What I get is, is that 
Cain knows what to do. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Come on. Cain knows the right thing. Yeah. The problem is he doesn't do what he knows yeah. is right. Yeah. What I get is is that even when you mess up, you know the right thing to do. Yeah. All right. You just have a choice whether or yeah. not to do what you know is best. Yeah. Right. He tells you in the scripture, he warns you and tells you what can happen. Yeah. But Cain chooses yes, to react in the wrong way. Yes. So I think you, you need to ask yourself these questions. What do I do when God rejects my offering? Do I get angry? Do I get frustrated? Do I get depressed? What do I do? Ask yourself that question. You can either go one way or the other. The truth is, we all know what to do. That's why you're responsible for your actions. You're responsible yeah. for whatever you do because as long as the word of God is going forth and it's being implanted in your spirit, the word of God says that you enter this word into your spirit so you may not sin against it. So if you sin, it ain't because the word ain't in your spirit. You just chose not to do the right thing. So Cain chooses to do the wrong thing. And so here's how we have to clean this thing up and I'm done. And so when we get down uh, to verse 10, 11, and 12, the Bible helps us to understand that, watch this, Cain, show enough, messes up. Yeah. Uh -huh. Cain, watch this, calls his brother, and, and here's why we know Cain intentionally messes up. Yeah. Some translations say that Cain calls Abel into the field. Yeah. The reason why that's in the field is important is because they know that if you call somebody to a field that you intend to do them harm, where when they scream, won't nobody hear them. So Cain calls Abel to the field. And when he gets him to the field, what does he do? He murders his brother. He kills his brother. The Bible says God comes to him and asks him, where's your brother? He actually says, I don't know. So then he lies about it. And he goes on and be arrogant and say, am I my brother's keeper? Like, what? Are you serious? I mean, who talks to God like that? Oh, don't answer. Don't answer. That's rhetorical. Don't answer. But here's the, here's the, here's the information I need y'all to get when I, as I close out, out this message. And that is that is it possible for pain to regain after being rejected and after reacting in a negative way is a way for us to get back? Yeah. According to Cain? Yeah. No. Come on. Cain never makes it back. Now, was Cain productive? The word of God says, yes, he was productive. He goes on to be a contributor to civilization, yet he was still cursed. He never came back. He never did the right thing. What's the right thing to do, Pastor? Are you already write this down? It's called repentance. That's all he had to do was repent. And with repentance comes restoration. How do I know? Watch this. Y'all do know a man by the name of David, and I'm done. Turn with me to the book of Psalm 51. Yes. Psalm 51. You do know a man by the name of David. Yes. David was a great man. He's a great king. Yes. But the Bible says that even though David was a great king, David had problems. Yes. David had issues. David had flaws. And you do know there was a time when David, the king, who has access to anything that he wants, sees something he ain't supposed to have. Yes. Someone by the name of Bathsheba. And the Bible says that when David sees Bathsheba, he wants him some Bathsheba. And so he does whatever it takes for him to get what he ain't supposed to have. And you know the story. The Bible says that he lays with Bathsheba, and Bathsheba has a child. Not only does Bathsheba have a child, but David decides that I'm going to cover my tracks. So he goes out and seeks a way to kill her husband. Do I, am, I, am I talking to people who know this story? He goes about trying to kill the husband of Bathsheba. Now there was a guy who was involved in this whole thing by the name of Nathan. Yeah. Nathan was a prophet. And so Nathan goes to David and says, David, I can't believe what you've done. He says, David, I am the one that's responsible for you being king. I am the one that's responsible for you being where you are. How in the world could you betray me like this? How in the world could you do this to me? And here's what I need somebody to get today. Here's how you get beyond the rejection and the negative reaction that you do in front of God. The first thing that David does is he Yes, I am a sinner. I have messed up. Yeah. Somebody here right now, whatever you're doing or whatever you've done, the first thing you need to do is at least admit that I have messed up. Yeah. We ain't got time for people to have a, 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 a spiritual indignation lesson. We stand up like you are all that in a bag of chips. All of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. David yeah. at least stops and says, you know what? I have sinned. The next thing that David does is he admits, you know what?
know, even though I've sinned, I'm, I'm also recognizing that I am a man. I was born into sin. There's nothing that I can do to escape sin. There's no place that I can go to escape sin. There's nothing I can do to live above sin. That means I don't have enough money. I don't, I don't know enough people. I don't have the right title to have my name. I don't live in the right neighborhood. There's nothing that I can do to escape the sin that I was born in. And then he goes on to do something that I encourage all of us to do. And that is, he says, I want to pray for forgiveness so that I can be restored to God where I once was. That's all pain had to do. But pain refused to do it. And so today, I need somebody in this place to recognize that if you do not have your priorities straight, if you are not doing things according to the way and will of God, that means that even if you know what to do and you're not doing to recognize that it ain't over, you still got time to get this thing right. You still got time to turn this thing around. That you don't have to go to your grave after having not repented and go to hell for all the stuff that you have done. Do I have a witness in here? I need to know that somebody's hearing me today because you should not come into this church knowing that you have not done everything right and having this opportunity to repent and get your life right and walk right back out that door. Convince you're going to do the same thing the same way and again expect a different result. You still have time to have a witness. God wants all of us to be blessed, better than blessed. Thank you, Lord. But we've got to do things according to the way and the will of the Lord. Has that been a blessing for somebody today? Put your hands together for God. Now, today I'm going to do something else different. I want y'all to stop right where you are because i got to pray for somebody right now. Somebody who has heard that word. Somebody in this place who you recognize. Even within your own self, you recognize that there's some things that you have done or you are doing that are out of God's priority. Remember, the covenant says that you do things the way God wants you to do them. And if I ask the question, I'm going to ask anybody to raise your hand, but if I was to ask the question, who in here is doing everything right according to God? Don't raise your hand. Don't raise your hand because we already know everybody in here is messing up. Everybody in here has fallen in some way or another. Some of you, you're not listening right now because your mind is falling right now. You're thinking about some stuff you know you need about, need not be thinking about. And God says that even though you are messed up in your mind, even though you are messed up in your actions, it ain't over. There's still some things that you can do. God still has another move in your life. And so today, I want to pray for somebody in this house today who you came in here not expecting to straighten out your priorities. Not expecting to think differently about what you're bringing to God in worship. You come into the church and you sat on your blessed assurance. And God says it's time for you to recognize that God will buy more from you than a tip that he wants your participation. I want to pray for you in this place today. If that is you, I want you to bow your heads right where right you are. And let us pray. Father, we just bless your name for your word. We recognize right now, God, that all of us have sinned and fallen short. That there's no one in this place today, God, that is too good for your will. That there's no one in this place today, God, that is, it, it, it is better than somebody else. All of us of filthy rags. And so because of that, we come to you now, God, uh, asking that you might deal in our spirits and deal in our hearts and deal in our minds and deal with those areas of our lives that we know are out of order. There's somebody in here right now, God, uh, they are wrestling in their spirit because they know that the decisions that they are making have not been dragged through the word of God. And so I pray for the Holy Spirit right now that you might move in this place that you've never moved before. That you might touch somebody like you've never touched them before. So you might change their life by first changing their mind and setting them on the right course. God, you said in your word that all we've got to do is renew our mind. All we have to do is start fresh in our heart and in our mind. So I pray now, God, that you might enter into the minds of these, your people, and that you might do a work that only you can do. I need you to touch God. I need you to heal God. 
I need you to deliver as only you can in this place.